talking, thought about him. All right. So uh, chapter 12, verse 2. And it came to pass that they did plead with their father many days that they might go up to the land of Nephi. King Mosiah went and inquired of the Lord if he should let his sons go up among the lame knights to preach the word. And the Lord said unto Mosiah, let them go up, for many shall believe on their words, and they shall have eternal life. And I will deliver thy sons out of the hands of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Mosiah granted that they might go and do according to their request. And they took their journey into the wilderness to go up to preach the word among the Lamanites, and I shall give an account of their proceedings hereafter. Now King Mosiah had no one to confer the kingdom upon, and there was not any of his sons who would accept the kingdom. Therefore he took the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass, and also the plates of Nephi, and all the things which he had kept and preserved according to the commandments of God, after having translated and caused to be written the record, records which were on the plates of gold, which had been found by the people of Limhi, which were delivered to him by the hand of Limhi. And this he did because of the great anxiety of his people but they were desirous beyond measure to know concerning those people who had been destroyed. And now he translated them by the means of these two stones, which were fastened into two rims of a bone. Now these things were prepared from the beginning and were handed down from generation to generation for the purpose of interpreting languages and they have been kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord that he should discover to every creature who should possess the land the iniquities and abominations of his people and whosoever has these things is called a seer after the manner of old times. Any thoughts regarding those uh, two verses? I thought it was interesting um, in that verse two and three, where it mentions go up four times. And I'm not um, necessarily sure of that meaning, but I, um, sometimes I think there's patterns in things um, and it's interesting that it says go up rather than they want to go to or go unto because sometimes I looked in um, other verses where it talks about going unto the Lamanites or unto a certain group of people or into their city but this is precisely go up, go up, go up, go up. Um, and so I, I just broke down each up. So the first up is go up to the land of Nephi. And then the second one is go up among the Lamanites to preach the word. And then the third one is the Lord saying, go up, for many shall believe on their words and have eternal life. And then the fourth one is go and do. And so they go into the wilderness. Um, yeah. Look, here comes Diane. So um, some of my thoughts, I, you know, it's just thoughts. <laughs> 
because I, I don't know. The first go up is to the land of Nephi. And to me, the land of Nephi is the, uh, the covenant, uh, Nephi being the covenant father, um, the high priest. He was the one that received the uh, emblems of kingship with the, the sword of Laban, the, um, the brass plates. Yeah. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning. Welcome. We are reading from um, Mosiah 12 in the Restoration Scriptures, and we just read verse 2 and 3. And I'm just going on a wild tangent about um, how in verse uh, 2 it talks about, it says, go up three times repetitively, and then the fourth time is go and do. So, um, yeah, the first go up, I thought it was uh, covenantal, um, land of inheritance, Nephi's people, and Nephi, that first original Nephi, is one of the fathers that we need to turn our hearts to um, because there's promises attached to this land. Um, the second go up, um, well, they're going among the Lamanites to preach the word. So to me, it's side of my mind that they were um, offering the covenant of Nephi to the Lamanites. Um, the third go up is the Lord. And the promise is that as they do those things, many shall believe on their words. And they, or the people, will have eternal life. And then, so after that promise, there's a go and do. And um, it's their commission. It's the word to now go and do it, to now go and preach. Just like Hiram um, was keen to go and, and preach things, but the Lord said, wait until you have my word, my rock, my church. Um, so it was God's word giving the authorization. And so they go into the wilderness and the wilderness uh, is a place where God brings his people to be refined, to meet with God, um, to be endowed. Um, yeah, so they were some of the thoughts I had about the repetition of go up. Yeah. I wish I saw things like you do. <laughs> I'll keep trying. <laughs> but you bring out uh, beautiful things too, Melissa. Like it's just that we have different things that are that we see and our brains do and the things made in our heart and we bring it all together into a beautiful picture. Yes. We all have pieces. And I don't know if what I shared had any value anyway. It's just. No, no, it was beautiful. Just Thank ideas. You. <laughs> okay, I just so. saw the word seer and I used to always mm -hmm. speak of Brett with that. He would always do these things. Can you say that again? I, I saw the word seer and I used to always sit, think of Brett. Oh, Brett. Mm -hmm. It was my little seer. <laughs> oh, and I think um, that is a gift that God gives his people. Mm -hmm. And as you study the scriptures and as the spirit of truth informs you, you'll be able to become that as well. Like you'll be able to take these words and apply it to today and show others and prophesy in that way and of the patterns. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> Um, Matt, any comments you want to type in text? Chat? <laughs> if you do, just go ahead and we'll read them. Um, Melissa, did you want to read verse four? Sure. 
And now after Mosiah had finished translating these records, behold, it came, it gave an account of the people who were destroyed from the time that they were destroyed back to the building of the great tower at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people and they were scattered abroad upon the face of all the earth. Yea, and even from that time until the creation of Adam. Now this account did cause the people of Mosiah to mourn exceedingly. Yea, they were filled with sorrow. Nevertheless, it gave them much knowledge in the which they did rejoice. And this account shall be written hereafter. For behold, it is expedient that all people should know the things that are written in this account. Thank you. I find it interesting that a people so uh, with many generations between uh, the Tower of Babel to where they're at, they still, they mourn exceedingly um, for what happened at that point. And that was... um, and I wonder if they're mourning the people or they're mourning the wickedness or their ancient ancestors or mourning that loss of um, truth about the holy order. Because the Tower of Babel was at the time that Abraham, Noah, um, I think Methuselah had died, Shem was alive. Um, And so like the Book of Mormon uh, contains an account of that. And so that's pretty amazing. Um, That later on, as we get some of the translation of those plates from the Jaredites. um, Yeah, there's a record there directly from the Tower of Babel. I think I read somewhere um, that in that account of the Jaredites, the part that we have, there is a revelation there um, for these last days that will be given to the Lord's people at a certain point. So I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's got to do with the holy order, um, the covenants of the fathers. Any thoughts? I was just wondering how many years it has been since that uh, time. Do you know? Because these pages don't have time frames on them. Yeah, no, I don't. Oh, I think, um, well, it, I think it's about 500. I think, I'm not sure. 500 years since Lehi. Um, but I don't know from the Tower of Babel. I don't either. Hey, uh, chapter 13. <coughs> Anyone would like to read? Oh, there's a comment uh, on that. Thank you. Did you want to read it, Diane? Um, Matt says this account must be a highly significant piece in connecting to the fathers. Yeah, I think so. And it's been in the scriptures all this time and I'm looking forward to when the Lord will make it so clear that we can't unsee it. All right, if anyone wants to read... um, Chapter 13. I will. Oh, did we re- finish chapter four? Yes, we did. I mean, uh, first four, we did. Sorry, sorry, Carrie. You're fine. And now, as I said unto you, that after King Messiah had done these things, he took the plates of brass and all the things which he had kept and compared them upon Alma who was the son of Alma, 
yea, all the records and also the interpreters, and conferred them upon him and commanded him that he should keep and preserve them, and also keep a record of the people, handing them down from one generation to another, even as they had been handed down from the, from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. Shall I continue? Thank you. Now, when Messiah had done this, he sent out through all the land among all the people, desiring to know their will concerning who should be their king. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came saying, we, ate, we are desirous that Aaron, thy son, should be our king and our ruler. Now Aaron had gone up to the land of Nephi. Therefore, the king could not confer the kingdom upon him. Neither would Aaron take upon him the kingdom. Neither was any of the sons of Mosiah willing to take upon them the kingdom. Therefore, King Mosiah sent again among the people, yea, even a written word sent he, he among the people, that these were the words that were written, saying, Behold, O my people, or my brethren, for I esteem you as such. For I desire that ye should consider the cause which ye are called to consider, for ye are desirous to have a king. Now I declare upon to you that he to whom that the kingdom doth rightly belong has declined, and it will not take upon him the kingdom. And now if there should be another appointed in his steed, behold, I fear there would arise contentions among you. And who knoweth but what my son, to whom the kingdom doth belong, should turn to be angry and draw away a part, a part of this people after him, which will cause wars and contentions among you, which would be the cause of shedding much blood and perverting the way of the Lord, yea, and destroy the souls of much people. Now I say unto you, let us be wise and consider these things, we have no right to destroy my son. Neither should we have any right to destroy another, should he be appointed in his steed. And if my son should turn again to his pride and vain things, he should recall the things that he had said and claim his right to the king, kingdom, which would cause him and also his people to commit much sin. And now let us be wise and look forward to these things and do that which will make for the peace of this people. Therefore, I will be your king the remainder of my days. Thank you. Any thoughts about a king? And what Carrie just read? I thought it was um, important to remember that um, having a king that's not um, a servant of God, like a man king <laughs> that doesn't know God, uh, will always lead to contentions and wars and bloodshed and um, perverting the way of the Lord. And so I, when I think of king, I think of um, one of the Nephites. I don't remember which one. But where it was explained that God said to him, I, God, trust you, Nephi. Um, I guess with the power of God, because he knew Nephi would not do anything contrary to God's will. And how... Um, Mosiah is saying here that um, in being wise to consider these things, even in considering his son, we have no right to destroy my son, is what it says. So I guess if someone's not at that level of trust with God, absolute power corrupts. Um, and I guess ego steps in and the love of being popular and adored and priestcraft, I guess, 
it's easy to step into that, those lines cross. Good morning, Julia. Welcome. We are, uh, Carrie just read from Mosiah chapter 13, and he read up to verse three, well, up to verse three. I was also thinking about um, Joseph Smith and how he was anointed a king, um, which at that time, I think the scriptures talk about uh, kings and queens, which I think are servant roles, mothers and fathers. But at that time when the people weren't ready for that level of understanding, um, I think it caused a lot of jealousy and contention and and who is this Joseph Smith that's saying he's going to be a king on the land when really it's a servant role it's a trusted role by God it's not a king king over people but it's uh, like a father a mother in a holy order patriarchal priesthood kind of sense is what I think and so at that time, the people weren't ready. And well, we know how that all turned out for Joseph Smith and Hiram. So true, yep. Yeah. And I think that was a part of um, some of the reason why his closest followers wanted to kill him as well because of um, the king. <laughs> The, having that king idea, a king upon the land, a king above them. Um, yeah, any thoughts? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Eva? Eva? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I have a question on that uh, Joseph Smith thing. Wasn't his kingship there an anointing from uh, that had to do with the uh, holy priesthood and not to do with the ruler. Mm -hmm. And so was it just the word king that bothered um, the people because he didn't act like a king in the sense of a king? <laughs> Mosiah, now he was actually over the people. Right. So... For me, it goes back to when Joseph Smith said, you never knew me, you never knew my heart. And um, that if he could tell who he truly was or his role, I forget how the quote goes, that um, basically all hell would break loose. And so yeah, I think into, he, Shatter into a thousand pieces or something. Right. And so I think... The people at that time, I mean, they had so much going on as well. They just didn't realize um, the form and function of the title king because it's a form and function rather than that person is a king. There's a work and a labor attached to that title. Yes, I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think they were looking at it in a worldly sense and didn't comprehend that kingship perhaps meant like a patriarchal father and a mother and tying into those covenants of the fathers. I think. Well, and Joseph didn't go around proclaiming himself king. It was no. probably, it was a very quiet thing, wasn't it? I mean, so that goes along with those who were jealous and part of his martyrdom I guess yeah I mean at least that's my understanding at this point mm -hmm. okay just wanted to make sure I was getting it right thanks I don't know if it's right it's just <laughs> I've seen that too <laughs> any other thoughts Okay, well, if someone wants to carry on with uh, verse 3. I can do that. Thank you. Nevertheless, let us appoint judges to judge this people according to our law. 
and we will newly arrange the affairs of this people. For we will appoint wise men to be judges that will judge this people according to the commandments of God. Now it is better that a man should be judged of God than of man. For the judgments of God are always just, but judgment judgments of man are not always just. Therefore, if we were possible that ye could have just men to be your kings, who would establish the laws of God and judge this people according to his commandments. Yea, if they could have men for your kings, who would do even as my father Benjamin did for his people. I say unto you, if this could always be the case, then it would be expedient that ye should always have kings to rule over you. And even I myself have labored with all the power and the facilities which I have possessed to teach you the commandments of God and to establish peace throughout the land that there should be no wars or contentions, no stealing, no plundering, no murdering, nor any manner of iniquity. And whosoever has committed iniquity, him have I punished according to the crime which he has committed, according to the law which have been given to us by our fathers. Thank you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Matt had a comment. He said, our culture has a tendency to lift people, which leads to corruption. We need to be careful not to lift up our present servant and guide. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate today um, the reiteration over and over again that um, we need to make the journey into God's presence. We can't rely on a man. Um, but certainly a sent one helps us to have correct faith and ought to be like a ruler, meaning a measuring stick. Like you measure the conduct, you measure the truth being taught um, rather than a ruler of it king over people and everyone's you know I'm I like how it equated king to King Benjamin and that is the perfect type of what a ruler in God's kingdom or a measuring stick um, or the form and function of the title king ought to be it's a King Benjamin type a servant teaches his people righteous principles um, brings covenant and uh, gets down and labors with his people directly. And avoid judging. And mm -hmm. then also, you know, having your own, you know, not depending on someone to just guide you mindlessly through your mm -hmm. own journey to God. Yeah. I love how you said refrains from judging because I think um, it's being said that judging is rather ironic. Melchizedek is blessing. And so even as we read uh, prior, where Alma has these people that, or it's their sons and others who are causing contention in the kingdom. And he, and he goes to, he brings them to uh, Mosiah and Mosiah is like, I'm not judging them, you judge them. <laughs> uh, because when... I think one is up on the mountain, um, it costs more and you lose ground to come down off the mountain to perform in an ironic way of judgment. <laughs> so, and that's where I love that we're being taught today to um, be independent and ourselves take the scriptures, the guidance standard and apply it to our own lives and not be dictated to in every part another thing here in this it's setting out a way to handle government also uh, because it says that 
He had the kings establish the laws of God as the laws of their government. Um, at least that's what I get out of it also. And, um, and boy, do we need that today. Mm -hmm. you know, they had good judges that follow the laws that were established by God. Oh, you know, and freedom, I'm sure. So um, it's kind of, kind of ominous when you think about what what can happen when evil judges judge too. Uh, and they don't judge by the laws of God. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Constitution was set up under the uh, laws of uh, of a moral uh, of a moral government. So there's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Matt says our current teacher has made it clear that he will not leave behind a set of power for someone to corrupt this people. If we are to rise up, it must be while he lives. Yeah. And isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because when, uh, when the close of that generation happens, the generation, if I remember correctly, is defined as uh, when you have um, one that has been sent from God and um, continuing revelation and covenants. And when that ends, that's the end of that generation. So we have a lot to do uh, while we have an authorized administrator today. Mm -hmm. Brett always said to me, if something happens to Denver, our chance is over in this generation. For Zion anyway, yeah. Yeah, for Zion, not for for our own lives, but and that does and that doesn't put him above anybody. It's just he's the servant to bring the message. Mm -hmm. That's right, because there's an order in God's house. Whether we like it or not, there's an order in God's house and it um I appreciate that it has been said, I want you to be my equal, actually not my equal, but my better. Like, mm -hmm. So use him as the stepping stone to become elevated. Um, yeah. Oh, and I, I had another thought about, um, Carleen, what you brought up, um, that the righteous judges are set to, what did you say? Uh, establish laws mm -hmm. and govern the people. Is that what you said, Carleen? Well, the righteous judges follow the laws established. The, a judge isn't supposed to make a law. He's supposed to follow the laws. And, and in here it indicates um, that, you know, they set up the, the laws of a king according to the laws of God. And so um, those laws are there. Now, in our society today, we're seeing unrighteous judges make laws and not follow the laws of our Constitution. And so um, not that the, and it's not party related. It just has to do with following the law. Instead, we, uh, so it's really important that a judge follow the laws that are there. Uh, of God and of a, of a land. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Yeah, really appreciated. I um, do like <clears throat> when you um, when you have a people that's that's like descending into wickedness. You know, the the laws will not always be laws of God and the laws become corrupted as the people become corrupted. And I think right. that That's here true. as well with our laws um, not being laws of God anymore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Diane, will you please give that cute baby a kiss on the head from Auntie Eva? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's so sweet. 
I love that he joins us. Thank you for sharing him, especially with me because I don't have babies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking uh, the civilization talk that Denver gave in Grand Junction. In that talk, I understood that when we have a temple, that uh, that then is when civilization starts because the laws and the commandments, covenants come forth from the temple and guide the society. So technically, in a spiritual sense, we're not even civilized yet until the temple's on the ground and accepted by God and functioning. And didn't he say in that same talk or one of them that it was going to be a world so different that we couldn't even comprehend it. It, it would be so different. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I'm grateful we have this time now to try and come out of Babylon as much as is possible. And I don't think that means money and work. I think it means the mindsets, the incorrect judgments, the false idols, the different gods, the inc incomplete teachings. To me, that's more what Babylon means. Mm -hmm. so we need money. We need to work. We need to pay our bills. We need to pay Babylon what she is owed. And, um, yeah. And we need to go to secondhand stores and buy clothes for fun. <laughs> right, I love that. right, Melissa. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'll, be right, I'll be right there. <laughs> That's my Babylon. I just can't not go look at clothes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but then I think they, they will find cloth. That was part of Zion, so maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> 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 just a side note there <laughs> I love it I think um, when we have a temple too and it's functioning not only are we civilized but it is in like a return to Eden because Eden was a temple setting so I hope we don't all have to be naked I don't think we will but that would be like a little scary <laughs> that would be awful <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because I was wondering, you know, what the attire would be. <laughs> well, didn't didn't Denver in one of his talks say that he always pictured him in attire somewhat like uh, the Egyptians, the beautiful long clothing what talk is that he said that in do you know um, I don't remember but I think yeah he was talking about what they look like in the heavens what he thought, thought it would be yeah mm -hmm. why do you clothing is beautiful I do you too know, a robe is easy to sew whereas you know all these uh, fashions we have today are, are not so easy to sew no no that yeah, baby is, robe is pretty easy to sew <laughs> <laughs> and accessorized what did you say melissa and accessorized <laughs> creative <laughs> we can then just we walk around and into the hoops and the tingling symbols oh, yeah. that things we're not supposed to wear. <laughs> anyway, but it's really hard not to take a little baby and dress him, dress him so cutely or she, <laughs> that little baby we're seeing. I mean, how do you not want to do that? You know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. it must be a way. <laughs> he agrees. <laughs> Sweet baby. <laughs> but when we're all when we're all equal in the sense of a Zion mutual agreement situation, we'll all have our different talents and want to do different things. And I think it'll be okay, you know. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not our idol. Yep. Yep. 
anyway, what do I know? It's going to be a lot, Carly. <laughs> oh, a lot, Carly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. If someone wants to continue on. Yeah. I can if you like. Thanks, Carrie. Verse four. Mm -hmm. Now I say unto you that because all men are not just, it is not expedient that you should have a king or kings to rule over you. For behold, how much iniquity doth one wicked king cause to be committed? Yea, and what great destruction. Yea, remember King Noah, his wickedness, his abomination and also the wickedness and abominations of his people. Behold, what great destruction did come upon them. And also because of their iniquities, they were brought into bondage. And it were not for the interposition of, all, of their all-wise creator. And this because of their sincere repentance. They must have unavoidably remained in bondage until now. But behold, he did deliver them because he did humble themselves before him. And because they cried mildly to him, he did deliver them out of bondage. And thus doth the world work with his power in all cases among the children of men, exceeding the arm of mercy towards them that put their trust in him. Thank you. Going back to the King Noah thing, how quick... Um how quick a, a group of people can go into iniquity when they have a king that is not connected to God, knows God, and has a testimony of God's laws. Because I think, is it Zenith who was king, Noah's father? And he was like a righteous king. He established, like they had the truth, they had the priesthood. And then he dies and his son corrupts it all. That was the iniquity because iniquity is to grow, go cross purposes with um, the truth, the current dispensation. And so, yeah, how quick that can be. Another thing I find in the scripture, that very last sentence is a promise the Lord uh, will work with his power among his children. I've started to put to mark the promises in the Book of Mormon. And to me, that's a promise. Um, anyway. I love that, Colleen. That's a beautiful idea. I do, too. Yeah, yes. the Lord. Oh, sorry. Someone's Harry. Did you say something? I just said yes, I agree. Um, and, and like in this verse, it shows. Oh, yes, Julia, please. I'm sorry. Don't say sorry. The interesting thing. The interesting thing about the Lord's promises is that always prior to the promise is an act of obedience. <coughs> in order to receive the promise. And so if we go to the sentence before that, it says, but behold, they did, after they talked about all the iniquity and so forth, it was rampant in that, at that time. He, it says, but behold, he did deliver them because they did humble themselves before them. And because they cried mightily unto him, unto and he did deliver them out of bondage. And then the promise comes. And thank you, Carlene, for bringing that up. Uh, I was really focused on what it took to have that promise fulfilled. And always when there's a promise, there has to be a law obeyed in order to receive that promise. They humble themselves and then they cry to him mightily. Good morning, Kitty. I like that. That's beautiful. I like that. Thank you, Julia. Yes, thank you. 
and how it shows the Lord's mercy that despite um, the abominations and King Noah's wickedness, it says, uh, were it not for the interposition of that all-wise creator, um, and that's when he sends Abinadi among them. And he says, because of their sincere repentance, and that was Alma initially, and then uh, the group that followed him. Um, so the Lord is always, his, when he says his arm is stretched out still, and how oft would I have gathered you? Like truly, he goes above and beyond in offering chances to reclaim his people. <clears throat> Another thing I've noticed about Denver, and I hope somebody's made a list because I haven't, is the various roles um, that he plays. The first role I, um, when I was first introduced to the restoration, the first role that I saw Denver in was the role of Abinadi and how he had come to cry repentance and uh, take us, those who would hear from their wicked ways so that they would be humbled and they would cry mightily unto the Lord. And I think he, his, his roles are variable in the various cryings that he presents, that the Lord has him present as the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I've seen uh, patterns from other servants that the Lord has had where I'm like, oh, that's a, I don't know, seems like an Enoch pattern or they, there's a Melchizedek pattern. And uh, so I wonder if that ties in with the scripture, all things gathered in one so to speak, in one dispensation rather than one person, but all those types gathered in one dispensation. Yeah, that's a very interesting thought. We can keep our eye out for that. Okay, next verse. I can read that. And behold, now I say unto you, we, ye cannot dethrone an iniquitous king, save it be through much contention and shedding of much blood. For behold, he has his friends in iniquity, and he keepeth his guards about him. And he teareth up the laws of those who have reigned in righteousness before him. And he trampleth under his feet the commandments of God. And he intacketh laws and sendeth and, um, send thee them forth among the people. Yea, laws after the manner of his own wickedness. And whosoever doth not obey his laws, he caused to be destroyed. And whosoever doth rebel against him, he will send his armies against them into war. And if he can, he will destroy them. And thus an unrighteous king doth pervert the ways of all righteousness. And now behold, I say unto you, it is not expedient that such abominations should come upon you. Reminds me of Brigham Young's Celestial kingdom mm -hmm. um, and how oh. Brigham Young self appointed him, himself a king, so to speak. And yeah, if you don't agree with him, um, there were consequences there that we know from some of the history that has come to light. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to keep reading the next verse? Therefore, choose you by the voice of, the, of this people, judges, that ye may be judged according to the laws which have been given 
you by our fathers, which are correct and which have given them by the hand of the Lord. Now it is not common that the voice of the people desirous anything contrary to that which is right, but it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore, this shall observe and make, make it your law to do your business by the voice of the people. Thank you. I had um, a quote. I'm just trying to find it. I'm on a different screen. Just a second. I can't find it. But I, I found a quote. I'll, I'll look it up properly and then share it. But it um, talked about how if you can't persuade people by the content of the message, then the message doesn't have God's, have the voice of God in it. Wait, that, that's not the right quote. <laughs> Forget that. But it talked about um, that it's rare that the voice of the people will choose um, it's rare that the voice of the people will choose iniquity. The majority of the voices when you take a vote will choose what is right and good and of God. And that it's only a small percentage of people that will vote the contrary. So I thought that was interesting in also how we move forward in perhaps choices that we need to come together in as a group of people that the majority, like, it's near impossible to have everyone equality, I mean, not equality, but um, unanimous. Um, and so how the majority vote, the, ma the majority people rarely choose an iniquitous king. <laughs> um, anyway, that was the idea of the quote. I'll find it and put it on the group. I find it interesting also in this paragraph uh, that the last line again gives us a, a directive. Therefore, this shall ye observe to do and make your laws to do your business by the voice of the people. And I, I, put, I put their commandment, but I don't know that it's a commandment, but it's, it's a directive from a righteous king um, and I like to look for those too. Um, and I think the voice of the people, if they have the truth, I think it's absolutely correct that they, the majority of the people don't go against uh, what is right if they have the truth. Yeah. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Um. All right, next verse. And if the time cometh that the voice of the people doth choose iniquity, then it is the time that the judgments of God will come upon you. Yea, then it is the time he will visit you with great destruction, even as he has hitherto visited this land. And now if we have judges and they do not judge, you according to the law which was given, yea, cause that he may be judged of a higher judge. If your higher judges do not judge righteous judgments, ye shall cause that small, that a small number of your lower judges shall be gathered together, and they shall judge your higher judges according to the voice of the people. And I command you to do these things in the fear of the Lord. And I commanded that you do these things, that ye have no king, that if these people commit sins and iniquity, they shall be answered upon their own heads. For behold, I say unto you, the sins of many people may be, may been caused by the iniquities of their kings. Therefore, iniquities are answered upon 
the heads of their kings. There's a lot in there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, Carrie? Well, it pretty much reflects the times we're living in. You know, unfortunately, the way our country's going. And about history, you know, um, learning from, you know, even the the Jews before Christ, you know, they had so many laws. I mean, they were just lost in laws and judges upon judges and no voice of the people. Yeah. Diane, do you have any thoughts? I think um, it's interesting how when you have a king, the wickedness of the people is answerable upon the head of the king. But when you have, you know, a system that establishes freedom and independence, then you're responsible for your own sins. You know, like the king is not responsible for your sins. The, the leaders that <coughs> um, that you elect are not responsible for your sins until it, you know, descends into tyranny and then they're responsible for your sins again mm -hmm. like, i just think that's interesting and also how you know king mosiah built like a a check and balance into the system he's establishing here with the um small group of lower judges able to come together and judge a higher judge who's not judging righteously no mm -hmm. so he established a way to balance that out if that situation is taking place yeah thank you and not being from this country originally myself <clears throat> like i noticed there are themes in the constitution of those balances and checks i don't quite understand it but i do see that there is that kind of theme. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Diane, you said something that connected a scripture to me about um, the king being responsible for the um, the sins of the people if it's if they don't teach the people or have those checks and balances. Is that what you said? Have those checks yeah. and balances? Yeah, that's. Um, that's here in verse seven toward the end. Reminds me of um, when you can find a righteous king and there are righteous people, leaders, judges, whatever, teaching like part of their labor is to get down and teach with the, to labor with the people, to teach them to uh, really like walk with them in teaching correct faith and God's commandments because at some point when they've labored enough, they rid themselves of the blood or the sins of that generation because they have taught them enough that they can they ought to stand on their own two feet now. Yeah, that's the thought I had that connected that scripture that some of the prophets have said, I've delivered the message, I've taught you, now I am clean from your blood. <laughs> All right, um, and if there's no other thoughts, or any other thoughts? I just had another thought about what Carrie said. I think that's your name, right, Carrie Hightower? <laughs> um, yes, yes. I was remembering uh, 
a podcast where where Denver said on the scripture where it says that the devil looks up because of the he has chained the people and Denver said that chain is lies. Do any of you remember when he said that? He said the earth right now, what we're in is a we're being chained by lies. And, you know, if you have righteous judges and things are done right, those lies can't win. But it was in one of Dender's speeches that he, he said that chain. You, you know the scripture I'm talking about where the mm -hmm. devil looks, laughs because of the people? Yes. And, yeah. and, and Denver said it was the chain was lies. Mm -hmm. And so when we live a Mormon, we get the truth of how things should be. Which is a wonder, which is wonderful. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in with what what Carrie said with, about what's happening. And Eva, don't feel bad. Most of the most of the young people today don't know anything about our constitution. You probably know a lot more than most. <laughs> so anyway, this is a wonderful chapter. Yeah, I'm enjoying. Our discussion. Thank you, everyone who's contributed. Good morning, Brian. Thanks for joining us. You're just in time. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Sorry. Oh, good. A little tired. <laughs> are you home or are you with Matt? With Matt. He's with Matt. upstairs. He's, upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> He's right above me. <laughs> He's got the dogs or something. So he can't disturb the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we can go into prayer. Um, let me just share the screen. By the way, what were you? Were you? What scripture oh, yeah. were you reading? We were reading from. Does anyone want to give him a synopsis of what we discussed and read? It's we were. Um, <laughs> we were Mosiah. Chapter 13, uh, finishing off 12 and into 13. Mm. I like those chapters because it gets into the um, and the transition to the voice of the people and how the uh, kind of the voice of the people, they had to learn how to govern themselves with, by that some, at times on various subjects. Mm -hmm. so. And just like what a, a king, a righteous king, the form and function rather than, you know, I'm the king, you must obey me. There's a, the titles have different functions. And so a king is a ruler, a servant, a measuring stick. Yeah, there's not a lot of takers for what it actually is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Oops, I messed it up again. Hold on. As far as prayers too, can you, you guys? Um, it's pretty clear that uh, among us that we need. There's kind of a, a moving need for some storage of items uh, so that we can um, uh, start. <laughs> we we need to be able to store some items that will go to the the community and to the temple area eventually. And also to to help other people, and so we're been asked to help with some of those things. And why do you um, even begin with that? Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, that's what we yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so just some prayer times. I'm just trying to think of a, a precedence, but. It's a, it's a time of preparing things. And it's like building the ark. Building the ark, we're gathering things like with mm -hmm. Noah. <laughs> the same with others. And so the, the, there's no particular boat where we're, <laughs> we're going to put stuff in, but we need to gather things that will be help us on our journey and help us when we in the new place. So just a thought. And, um, you know, thought I'd put it out there for prayer. Yeah. I wonder, like it's just a thought as well, because I don't know, is there things that different fellowships privately and quietly can focus on so it's not just dependent on some few to gather like 
one fellowship could focus on, I don't know, just for example, gathering wheat notes or and that's a dumb example, but um, just if the different fellowships have a theme of what they gather and then. And they yeah. And that's just, but we actually, one of the focuses is we need to build this, uh, the property that we have that is up in southeastern Idaho. It is becoming apparent we really need to get some storage in place because there's people that actually have, like, um, uh, from what <laughs> there's a, a person among us that has a, used to have a fa uh, food producing factory. <laughs> and uh, for, and, and he's, he's going to he's just decided to because of like kind of things he's so he's uh, going out of business is liquidating and um but he, he's got a lot of items that would be very helpful <laughs> a lot of the ma uh, manufacturing he's got sm smokers and other things that would be very helpful one day as a community so <laughs> we're like where would we put that <laughs> so mm -hmm. That's an example. So, and we also had somebody else donate some books. Um, that was they had a very large library that um, was important because of the, what he studied, and so that was donated, and that's in storage too right now. So, um, and I know there's a lot of people that have things that are important, and so the process of good triage and these things and deciding what to do with them and, and where to put them until until called upon so we need a great yeah. big warehouse like rex's a big onion factory <laughs> for everything <laughs> yeah 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 except for we need a, yeah we could do something like that but but this this with, with that <laughs> yeah something like that <laughs> so well it's good to see everybody uh, your beautiful faces i mean to jump in there but it's like you all look so <laughs> it's awesome it's like every morning i wake up and it's that time i'm thinking it's it's i'm grateful for the prayers because i know that right now our relationships are our our lives there's such a refining process that's been happening with all of us that there's a there's it's kind of like a wine press we're going through right now and and i see it in every one of us i was having some conversations before we went to last night and, and seeing the different things that uh, families and fellowships have been through um we we're all being kind of stretched and revealed to ourselves so so it's uh you have to have a lot of faith <laughs> and gentleness with oneself and others too and discernment to make it through all of this. So. And I was, Adrian and I were talking yesterday about how everything is in perfection. Like we're at this point because we're learning the lessons we need to learn, even in those really hard things. And um, it's in perfection so that we can cry out to God for um, God to help us through it and to learn what we need to learn, to learn how to. Um, talk with each other and deal with each other justly and kindly and how to prepare things and have a heart to prepare things for others and um, yeah these are pretty important powerful lessons that I think we have to go through like we can't avoid it and we will be added upon by this crazy yep, yep. experience <laughs> Wow, that's exact. Last night we were talking. There's a youth conference on the 25th coming up. I was going to take Jacob too. So, if other people want to go in the movement, I, I might take a, a carload up to up to on the 25th of this month back up to a Bountiful area. They can probably arrange for some housing. But so, if there's youth that want to go, uh, you know, spread the word. Um, but one of the things we talked about, just in seg what you were saying, Eva, was uh, last night we were talking about the atonement. Christ can enter into a person that's not broken, that doesn't have a broken heart until their their heart is broken and it's in, <laughs> and then there's places for him to to enter in. Then he can. And I, I've seen that sometimes. Why is this? 
the things that break us the most also prepare us and and some <laughs> for the the greatest blessings and being added upon as you were saying so anyway beautiful <laughs> thought but it, it's difficult when you're going through the breaking <laughs> it's all right. to say. Mm -hmm. like yeah. god god um loves those whom it looks like he's chastising it was just helping us remove our itchy scratchy harsh dragon skin so that <laughs> we can um yeah be something he can work with the gods can work with you know, something that's interesting to me too, I, I, it's never too late for us. It's like oftentimes the, the, one of the worst lies that we're, that we're given is it's too late for our lives. We're, we're done. We don't, you know, we can't have the things that we think we could have. Uh, there's a guy on my mission. I knocked on his door. He was paralyzed. He, he I mean, he, he looked like he was about 90 years old, but he was only 50 something. And he, is, he had... He had had a seizure and the left, his, uh, I think it was left side, I think it was his left side was paralyzed arm and like, he couldn't move the last three and a half years, was on a couch basically. Uh, by two, long story short, two and a half months later when we baptized him, because of us teaching and, and him, him going to the Lord and, and that whole process, he was, we gave him a blessing, he was healed and he drove himself a half an hour it was like 35 minutes uh, to the church for the first time and drove for the first time in three and a half years and was baptized and he, he for 25 more years he, he he labored and was became integral to that ward at the time I mean, it was a, a small branch in back uh, in backwoods alabama and he he had so much more life in him we have so much life in us. There's a life force that goes beyond this life, this body. This, and it can animate us through, through the spirit and, and lift us in ways that we never imagined. We think we're done because of this. And we look at, the part, at what we have. But, the, but he has so much more within us. I've seen it happen mul multiple times. And so we can't. The thing to do is to have the faith in him and in and the, the, the light that is within us that's connected to him. It can bring us through anything. So, anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. Okay, let's start our prayers. Um, does anyone feel to lead us? To start out? I can. My dearest Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time that we could spend together sharing hearts and diving into your word through our covenant, the Book of Mormon. We are grateful for the histories and the examples and the peoples and their lessons that we can learn from. And we desire you oh god to be our king and we are grateful for those whom you send that are the measuring stick of how our conduct and our thoughts need to be how our minds and hearts need to be elevated and and to walk in the paths of righteousness the father at this time we bring before you these people on the list that we have Harvalyn, Matt's mother, with her health concerns and um, what she's going through with the cancer. We bring before you Monica and her children and Brian and Jennifer and their children and their marriage, Evan and Diane and all their responsibilities and health that they're going through, Matt and also Liz. Um, individually and together and their healing and, and their journeys. We bring before you John and Anna Gilmore and Benjamin and Andrew and myself and Cynthia Gilmore, Janine and Mike, Sean and Jaina, Sean's mother, Karen, who has, who had a large brain tumor that the doctors had never seen the size of before. Um, 
and her recovery in surgery, Jacob and Adrian, Annie and Ashley Nagel, Lou Nagel and Adrian and their mission regarding Jerusalem. We bring before you Kerry Hightower and his family, Charlie Smith, Melissa Chapel, John and Kerry Durfee, Alex and Lisa Gilmore, David and Michelle, Samantha and Brett, Carlene and Greg, Keith and Karen, Mariah and Michael. We still pray for Michael that um, if it is safe and in, if it is your will that he may be released from prison and return to his family. We pray for Kyle, Liz's brother, um, for healing and upon his life and that he may have a connection with you as he seeks forgiveness of the things that he has participated in. We pray for Denver and Stephanie for protection and long life that the things that need to be accomplished in this generation while they are living may be brought to pass. I pray for Tanya and Kenny Simler and Julia and Dal Fuller and Tyler, their son. We pray for Janae Fuller and her son Aiden that they may have provision and protection and safety and healing. We pray for Dina Bailey and Summer Liz's daughter, Chris and Ofa Chandler, Aaron and Tina Kibbe and their daughter Emma and Ron and Bunny Erickson with Bunny's extremely poor health. And thank you, Father, that our list continues to grow longer. Um, we just pray for all of these, Father, that you will be felt by them, that they may be able to receive inspiration um, from you that will lead them guide them in whatever lessons they're going through right now to make the best choice for their health, their family, their circumstances, and that they may not feel so alone, but have the impression in their heart to cry out to you. We pray, Father, for those laboring in the movement, um, in especially preparing lands and places and housing and um, Father, we pray that the windows of heaven will be opened and that blessings and miracles will come that are unexpected, that we will be able to get the lands and the storage units, um, whatever it is that you see fit. Please bless those who um, are laboring that just those windows of heaven will be open so we can accomplish what needs to be done. And we pray, Father, that they may have direct revelation from you in their jurisdictions, um, if that's the right word, whatever they're called to do. Um, and I open this prayer for any who wish to say anything else. If anyone feels to add something else to the prayer. Okay. Father, we um, ask that you look into each person's heart and also see the words, the things which have not been spoken that um, they are crying unto you and praying in behalf of all these people on the list and themselves and um, things we have prayed for and that you will hear their prayers also, that it may be added as one great whole this morning. And we say this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It was funny. I had my mic was muted, and I was going to pray. <laughs> pray oh, started to pray you can and, still jump on, Brian. And it will, it will, well, I was just praying for our hearts, and you were kind of saying the same thing. That I, I feel like there's a time of 
uh, pruning or, or another way of looking at that, I've said it recently, is to uh, go to the Lord as the master husband and gardener and allow him to prune our lives, ourselves, our desires, our wants, so that we can become fruitful. It, it's time to, there's a particular season that eventually sometimes you you focus the energy of the plant you know and you guys know more better than i do but i in in kind of seeing this principle that he will help us guide us in you were saying praying it in our thoughts and desires to to want what we need in this coming season because i think this season that's upon us is is to prepare ourselves to bit by bit there's certain desires that kind of need to be or <laughs> there's righteous desires that we need to wait upon that we still continue to hold with with them but there's other things that we need to say is this important and even to do an inventory of our own lives it's like what stuff is important in our in our environments we, <laughs> what would we really need if we ever went or if things happen where we're at and we stay where we're at for a time or for however long that is what's most, most needful you know both physically and spiritually and, and so that's the season that i feel that's coming and, and it's symbolic often we're given little tasks to do that is that helps us learn spiritual things you know it's like because there, there's a process if you're putting stuff in storage for another time or you're going through making decisions deciding and you're also tuning your own heart your your feelings for what is needed so mm. um with him so anyway so that's just a thought and prayer i, would, I had that we can uh, endure sometimes the it, it's it is a little pruning in that sometimes we're we feel like we're giving away our parts of ourselves like we're losing ourselves <laughs> you know by making some changes but will we but if we look at it as being added upon and, and, and focusing our strengths, it may be helpful. So. And thank you, Brian. So I say amen to all your words and your prayer. Thank you. Um, I have a question really quick. Um, Brian, is it possible to use some of the temple fund to build these, the storage that you need? Yeah, I mean, it's been said that so this property is under uh, any if there's ever any if it's ever sold it goes directly to the temple fund anyway so anything given is like given to the temple fund because it either will go towards the temple as directly one day or the efforts that are being used here will storage other things uh, gathering for at times with other people it could be an occasional conference or meeting area um all those efforts are focused towards the temple so well, that can be a consideration that's what i wonder yeah so. it can be and that's actually i this last 24 hours i i haven't really gone to other fellowships for a long time but yesterday i kind of felt the shift and and i feel like i probably need to go up to well, there's a couple fellowships in Idaho, Southern Utah, and our fellowship. <laughs> I haven't really, uh, I've been, anyway, this is my first effort to start sharing those thoughts that I've been working on for a while. So, okay. thank Matt, you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, thank you all. So, so, I don't know if that's helpful. Thanks, Carly. Yeah. I have one last thought um, that I really appreciate how. At the time of the covenant, I think it was that Denver was like <laughs> looking at our behavior and, and as a people, as a whole, um, because the covenantal is the covenant is community. And he was like, call it off. I'm rethinking these people are not ready. Um, and the Lord was like, no, no, I expected this. I expected this drama kind of thing. I expected this mess. <laughs> um, and so if we just get our hearts right, like that's the main thing, even though it may look messy, we might feel like we're losing parts of ourselves trying to please the Lord or whatever it is, getting um, chastised by others who don't understand what we're trying to do. 
Um, if we just get our hearts right, the Lord can make us suitable to everything that he requires. And so I'm really grateful um, for that. Um, a reference would be for, for that too, this time, is the, the last paragraph of Jacob 3. Uh, this is the time and the season we're in. So, you know, last couple of paragraphs of, of, of Jacob 3 or Jacob 5 in the old scriptures. Okay, well, thank I'm you guys. I didn't mean to th thank you all for being here and for, you know, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's good to see you all. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Diane, I'll see you soon. And uh, good to see you, Carrie. Bye bye. Hi, I am um, have school today, Eva. Okay. I've got co-op from like this morning until noon, and I usually don't get home until one, one thirty. That's so, fine. I can bring it later this afternoon. It's not a problem. Or I could pick it up while I'm in Cedar Ridge if you want. Like, I mean, will it fit in the car? Your car will be pretty full. Ah, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll just bring it. It's okay. It's a beautiful drive. I'll bring it. <laughs> All right. Good. Hey, good. Tell Jennifer hi for me, Diane. <laughs> so, and good luck. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, uh, Carlene. Uh, Brett's name came up again, and we were chatting about them yesterday with a few people so um we were <laughs> he, his it seems like on certain times his uh his presence was there a lot <laughs> yesterday so was that a meeting was that a special meeting brian oh it was just uh just some of us were together <laughs> doing our kind of uh walk and and a and little dinner we go have sometimes. So I'm sure yeah. he wished he could be there. If he probably was. <laughs> I well, I think you. I mean, and David were talking about it, and, and a couple others. So, um, yeah, he's. I'm sure he's kind of. Uh, well, the idea that our, the idea that our, our personality is the same on the other side. <laughs> if we were like, hey, let's get, let's get going, let's get going, we it's the same on the other side, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And anybody that knew Brett was like, let's get going. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, you know, I'm, sounds like Brett. I, you know, Samantha is still really struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if any of you want to remember her special in any way without saying anything so i may be heading up there yeah. in the next but little while so if you are brian and have time please stop in and see her yeah uh, she works all day but you know she has a lunch hour but she's at home um, yeah no i'll i'll uh if i make it up there i'll definitely go see her so. Yeah, anywhere, so it's hard okay thank you for saying that brian for sharing You're just uh i know uh i know you'd want you to know <laughs> so, so. Okay. anyway we'll see you later <laughs> love y'all bye everybody bye 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 Julia, were you going to say something eva when you yes when you um were praying and asked if there's any of us who wanted to say more and then you, and then I was like, Brian, I was on mute and I'm like, ah, but anyway, <laughs> I do recall you saying that you must have known that there were desires in our hearts that we weren't saying. And so I felt to ask for earnest prayers for my granddaughter and her husband and their little baby I can hardly imagine being in this early phase of life and mm -hmm. not being able to connect with your first child and wondering if your husband would remain so that desire was in my heart and I wanted to thank you so much for um 
offering to the Lord for us when my mouth was silenced by a mute button that um, that aren't the desires of our hearts were combined in the prayers that were being offered and to know that those prayers were going up to heaven for so many people who are suffering so many unusual and difficult things going on in the world and in people's lives these days thank you for making that all inclusive thank you can you remind me that of uh are they on the list let me add them on the list um, what was the name again uh colton c-o-l-t-o-n and erica e-r-i-k-a the little baby is Elena. Of course, the children are included. It's already stated up yeah. in the prayer. Uh, their last name is St. John's. St. John's, what an awesome name. Yeah, they have a lot of fun with that. Got it. So while you're making corrections, um, just on our daughter, Janae, her name is spelled J-I-N-A-E. And her, she has two sons. The oldest is Ryan and Aiden, A-D-E-N. A-D-E-N and Ryan. R-Y-A-N, yes. You know, thank you so much. You marry and you never know that your own husband is going to work cross purposes to the whole idea of marriage and, and your existence. But it happens and so... He has a need to succeed in his effort, and it doesn't let down. So prayers are very ex grateful to be accepted. Thank you. Of course. We will continue to pray, and um, now I'm happy they're on the list. Okay, um, yes, right. Thank you so much. Of course. Yes, Carly. And Carly, while you're still there, I want to tell you yeah. that Samantha is frequently, constantly in our prayers. Um, I can hardly imagine the burden she carries in her heart and physically and in all ways. So we do continue to long for her peace and happiness and cry into the Lord for her. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to say, Eva, would you take one of the T's off from Brett's name? Yes. <laughs> he was funny about that. I'm very happy to do that. <laughs> and uh, and, and we, Julie, <laughs> sorry, we love having Brett's name there because it doesn't seem right that it's not there. <laughs> oh, I do too. I love it. And what was the other thing you were going to say, Colleen? I was just going to tell Julia that it's nice for Samantha to know that people remember. You know, sometimes people think it's been over a year, but... Oh. It, it just doesn't go away. Is it kind of like when a new mama has a baby, everybody comes and brings a casserole or con congratulations or something in the first two, maybe three weeks and two, three, four months down the road, seven months down the road is when she so desperately needs help off times. Mm -hmm. Not always, but sometimes it just builds up to that point. And I, I am certain, do you know, on the 12th, here in a couple of days, it will be three years since Darl had an emergency nine hour open heart surgery. And we've so been in now that his life was prolonged. Mm -hmm. Here he is, an older man. He's 72 now, and it's been three years. He was 69. And at that time, other younger men were leaving families that still needed to be raised. And that's kind of what is the possibility with Colton and Erica right now. And we had a lot of sorting and a lot of feeling going out towards those who sort that out. The Lord prolongs the life of an older man and takes younger men. And I guess he puts us where he wants us to be or allows us to be where we need to be. 
we have such a limited view. And I am so grateful to know that a wise and powerful father and mother, our divine parents are orchestrating all of this because good grief, what do we know? Yes, it helps, doesn't it, to remember that. Yeah, we're not yeah. in charge. We're not in charge. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Diana, thank you for bringing sweet Adam with you again today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I feel better enough that I can come again. <laughs> Good. Thank you for all who have come so we can gather together and sun is rising. We can go look at some nice rays. I um, heard um, someone shared with me that the different stages of growing together as a community and that for Zion, um, it had been mentioned in one of the talks, oh, that sun is bright, that um, Zion will require daily interaction. And so I like to think that our gathering daily is a seed at least um, in our hearts of community and family and, and just meeting together daily for this short time on the internet. And um, I'm grateful, grateful for everyone who shows up here, who's unable to show up here, but what if they could or, you know, just grateful. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. I love you all. Love yeah. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Enjoy your days. You too.